All right. What's up, Alabama fans? It's Andrew Bowen here with BamaInsider.com. Wanted to bring everyone up to speed uh, as to what all has been happening in Tuscaloosa over the course of the first two weeks of, uh, of the summer. You know, lots going on, a lot of visits, a lot of people who've been attending camp. Uh, I also have some news on some kids who visited elsewhere that, uh, you know, looks like they've, uh, you know, come close to making some decisions. So we will uh, we'll talk about some of those guys, but I also wanted to uh, touch base on the official visitors that Alabama's had on campus last week. I'm going to talk about some of the top campers uh, in the 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025 recruiting classes. And then I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's to come. But be sure to stay tuned to BamaInsider.com. We have a ton of recruiting coverage on Bama Insider right now uh, from you know, several interviews. I think we have close to about – uh, 30 interviews or more on Bama Insider right now from guys who visited Tuscaloosa over the course of the last two weeks. We also have a ton of recruiting notes, uh, guys who've done well in camp, guys who may not have done as well in camp. And uh, you know, th- these camp se- sessions, you get a chance to really see kids work out, but you also get a chance to uh, get their accurate height and weights for the first time. you, know, you got to think, a lot of these kids haven't been on campus in more than a year, so you finally get a chance to uh, see them up close, in person. Uh, you know, some kids who may say they're six foot four, they might be six foot two, or they say may say they're three hundred pounds, they really might be three hundred and eighty pounds. You just never know until you actually get them on campus. So we're going to talk about that. But first off, let's talk about the official visits. This is the first time, and I think someone said sixteen months that Alabama's had official visitors on campus. And let me tell you the difference between an official and an unofficial visitor. Official visitor basically just means your trip is paid for. You're put up in a hotel room. Uh, all your food's uh, paid for throughout the entire weekend. Your family get a, gets a chance to you know, spend time with the coaching staff. You get a chance to tour the campus and see everything. Um, you know, it's uh, you know a very in- intimate type visit as compared to an unofficial visit where you're paying your own way. You're putting yourself up in a hotel room if you decide to stay a day or two. So these official visits are certainly a lot different. Um, and, you know, I think when kids go on official visits, especially in this year's recruiting class, they have never experienced anything like this. They haven't really visited campuses before. So a lot of kids are going to be on this emotional high that they have never been on uh, in their life when they uh, when they take these official visits. So it's a lot of fun, uh, but definitely uh, definitely something that you know, they will remember for a long time. So you got to try to you know, figure out, are you going to get kids on campus as early as possible? Or are you going to try to save it and get their last official visit? Because you know, some of these kids, they go on their official, I'm done. I'm ready to make that decision. You got to try to hopefully, you know, some of them will hold off, make a decision a little bit later on after they take – all of their visits, whether that's to Alabama first or to Alabama last, you want to make the best informed decision for your college future. And, you know, we saw some kids that visited elsewhere this past week uh, that made decisions. We saw some that were close to making decisions, but decided they were going to hold off, step back, enjoy their process. And I even think there were probably some kids who visited Alabama this past week who were probably pretty close to deciding. And even a couple who told me that they thought about committing but decided to wait. Um, but Alabama did get its first commitment of the summer from Le'Veon Moss, four-star running back uh, from Louisiana. A little bit of a surprise to me just because I knew Alabama really liked this kid. You know, he measured in at five foot ten. 205 pounds, you know, great size at Alabama's, uh, you know, during the, I was about to say Alabama's camp, but during Alabama's official visit weekend, a, none of the official visitors actually camped. They just toured the campus. And, uh, you know, like I said, um, you know, had a chance to uh, spend a lot of time with the coaching staff and, uh, you know, see everything that they haven't seen before. But I think the biggest surprise to me was just the fact that he committed. Um, you know, this is a kid that Alabama holds in high regard, but a lot of people thought he was going to go to LSU. Many people had predicted him to LSU prior to his uh, visit to Tuscaloosa, but uh, make no mistake about it. This is a kid that was very high on Alabama's recruiting board, even though they do have one commitment already at the position uh, in Emmanuel Henderson. And you know, we, we can argue all day long. Is, is Emmanuel Henderson a running back? Is he an athlete? You know, he's a, uh, you know, he was recruited as a running back. You know, he was, you know, he can play other positions, but uh, as of right now, Alabama sees him more as a running back. So Alabama now has two running back commitments uh, in its recruiting class with Le'Veon Moss and Emmanuel Henderson. Now I've seen different things that have popped up 
you know, on different, uh, you know, different, uh, I guess, fans who've been saying, well, you know, even though they have Moss and Henderson, they're still going after other running backs. They're still recruiting other running backs, and they're going to get some guys on campus over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, some top guys. But as of right now, I, I think the running back class might be full. So you know, if Alabama, you know, they're still recruiting guys, but I think it's more so just in case they end up losing uh, one of their current commitments. And, you know, they really like Branson Robinson, the five-star running back out of Mississippi. They really like Trevor Etienne, uh, also out of Louisiana, and Jamarion Miller out of uh, out of Texas. Those are three backs that, uh, you know, have been heavily recruited, along with Nicholas Singleton out of Pennsylvania. And Nicholas Singleton told me the other day that he's going to be taking – he's still going to take an official visit to Alabama on June the 25th. So those are four guys that they're probably still going to bring on to campus. But, uh, you know, the running back class is very strong right now with, with Moss and Henderson. So uh, if these guys end up going elsewhere, uh, the other guys that are still planning on visiting Alabama, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be, you know, that big of a deal. Um, you know, with Alabama taking Moss as its second running back commitment, you know, it, I think it certainly sends a message that they, you know, even though there's some elite guys out there, this is how highly thought of they thought of, uh, you know, Le'Veon Moss. They really liked him a lot. Um, you know, runs with power, has great speed, uh, and definitely somebody that, uh, that they wanted in their recruiting class. You know, he wasn't the only official visitor that was in Tuscaloosa this past weekend. They had six other guys uh, who were in town and some who I could easily see in Alabama's class. Barry and Brown, Rivals 100 wide receiver out of Nashville, uh, has been one of Alabama's top wide receiver targets for a while. You know, we've talked about him a good bit on the show throughout the year. You know, this is a guy who, in my opinion, Alabama considers him one of their top two, top three wide receiver targets. And this is going to be a really small wide receiver class at the Tide sign for Rivals 100 wide receivers last year. So this is a guy they hold in very high regard. Excellent, uh, you know, track star. So brings a lot of speed to the table. Uh, he was down in Tuscaloosa with his, with his entire family. Uh, Jake Taylor. You know, this is a guy that I really like a lot. I mean, he is a big kid, six foot six, two hundred and ninety pounds. I had a great official visit weekend. We had a really in depth interview with him on Bama Insider earlier this week. I certainly encourage uh, everyone to go check that interview out because he said a lot of very positive things uh, about that first official visit. Now, he still has two more official visits uh, this month before he makes a decision. He wants to make a decision before his uh, senior season, so we're looking at maybe you know sometime in July or August when that decision uh, comes out for Jake Taylor. Um, Notre Dame's going to get a visit this weekend. Then he's going to visit Oklahoma. Now, a lot of people think he's going to go to Oklahoma, but I think Alabama has done a tremendous job recruiting him uh, since they offered him back in February. He's developed a very strong relationship with the coaching staff. I do think it probably comes down to Alabama and Oklahoma. Now, we'll see how his official visit to Notre Dame goes this weekend, but I certainly believe that Alabama has made a very strong uh impression and statement with Jake Taylor and his family. So you know, those are, uh, you know, a couple of the out-of-state guys that I feel like Alabama's got a great chance with. Uh, Shamar James, outside linebacker from uh, from Mobile, Faith Academy. Uh, you know, now this is a guy that I felt like there was a chance that he was going to go ahead and commit, and he even admitted. He said, you know, there, I, I did think about it during my official visit, but decided to hold off, going to wait until next month to decide. Now, he was going to visit. Just Alabama and Florida. He had an official. He has an official visit scheduled to Florida on June the 18th. But now he's going to take a couple other visits. He's going to go to Auburn this weekend. Then he's going to take a visit out to Oregon on June the 25th. In my opinion, I think this is more just to enjoy the recruiting process. I really do think Alabama is in the driver's seat for him. You know, this is a uh, you know guy that is ranked as an athlete but is being recruited more as an, a linebacker and you know I talked to him earlier this year and he was being recruited a little bit more as an outside backer after going over to Alabama measuring in uh, you know a little over six foot two 215 pounds uh, Alabama talking to him a little bit more about playing inside backer and you know he really likes that a lot so we'll be seeing a decision from Shamar James probably sometime in uh, July I really like Alabama's chances in landing him a couple other guys they were in Tuscaloosa for official visits this past weekend, included uh, Jacob Sexton, big offensive tackle from Oklahoma, uh, Aaron Anderson, who is a 
LSU commitment. Uh, still is an LSU commitment. Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk to uh, to Anderson just yet, but uh, uh, we heard his visit went really well. And also Kenyatta Jackson, uh, Rivals 100 outside linebacker uh, from Hollywood, Florida. Now, I had a chance to talk to Jackson uh, really in depth about his official visit. And, you know, he ha- had an outstanding time, and I encourage uh, all of you to go check out his interview about the official visit. Another uh, thing about Jackson is he's planning on coming back to Tuscaloosa for an- another unofficial visit uh, this month. Now, I spoke to him on Friday about that. There were some rumors that he was going to come into town uh, this upcoming Monday, but he said he doesn't know yet. Still trying to work out some details. May wait another week. Alabama's having a little bit of a uh, cookout uh, type event here in a couple weeks, so he may wait until then. So either next week or the week after, Kenyatta Jackson, uh, outside linebacker, edge rusher from uh, Hollywood, Florida, is going to make a trip back to Tuscaloosa, so we'll uh, be keeping a very close eye on him. So that's kind of a quick look at the official visitors who came into Tuscaloosa uh, last week. Uh, obviously, a great weekend, a great event. You know, we saw a lot of different photos, videos, uh, new things at Alabama. And I think one of the biggest things that I took away from uh, the overall visit was uh, just the uh, the fact that. These guys really talked a lot about the strength and conditioning program uh, with uh, with Coach Ballou and, and Dr. Matt Ray. I think those guys really enjoyed uh, everything that they learned there. Learned, you know, really loved the science part of it, and um, you know, were really impressed. Another thing that Coach Saban uh, talked to these guys about is how Alabama can really help them out in the name, image, likeness uh, arena. I think they were really blown away by Alabama in that regard, and uh, you know. I don't know exactly what Alabama said to him about it, but uh, it seemed to uh, really resonate with those guys, and they really liked what they were hearing. So let's move on. Let's talk about some of the other 2022 recruits who were in Tuscaloosa, because there was a bunch of them. Even though these guys weren't in on official visits, there was a lot of unofficial visitors that were on campus. A lot of them worked out. Uh, you know, Some of them just spent time on campus hanging out with the coaching staff. But you know, let's talk about some of the in-state guys that visited Tuscaloosa. I'm talking about Jeremiah Alexander, Justice Finkley, two big-time targets for the Tide, visited on Saturday. Jeremiah Alexander, the number one player in the state, former Alabama commitment uh, from Thompson High School. Now, he came out and said uh, after the visit that he was kind of shutting down his social media, doesn't really want to uh, you know, post anything or, or hear anything until he makes uh, his final decision. Now, Clemson, Georgia, Alabama. Those are really the top you know, three schools in the mix for him right now. And he came out and said that Clemson was his favorite after uh, visiting the Tigers last week. I think he had a great trip to Clemson. I think you know, it was his first, uh, it was his first visit of this uh, 2021 year. I, I think Clemson is certainly a, a strong contender for him. But in the end, I still really like Alabama's chances with, with Jeremiah Alexander. I think they can get him back in the fold. This is a kid who grew up an Alabama fan, talks to the Alabama coaches almost on a daily basis, uh, you know, only lives about 40 miles from the campus. So I still think Alabama has a great chance to, uh, to get Jeremiah Alexander back in the fold. Justice Finkley, I don't know who all have, has seen his photos from uh, his visit, but you know, this is a well-put-together defensive lineman, six foot three. Uh, 260 pounds, uh, you know, a lot of room to grow. Uh, you know, this is also a very smart kid. Um, visited Stanford last week, going to take officials to Michigan, to Texas uh, later on this month. Uh, also going to visit Colorado. Um, I think Alabama, you know, really impressed him uh, and his family. He had a chance to sit down uh, with Coach Saban, really had some, you know, big questions for him regarding academics. And, uh, you know, this is certainly a, a big factor for him uh, in his recruitment. But I think Alabama uh, knocked it out of the park with him, and I, I think things went extremely well. Now, there were some other in-state guys who were in town last week. Traquan Fagans, Antonio Kite, two elite defensive backs. Antonio Kite from Aniston, Traquan Fagans from Oxford, but is transferring over to Thompson High School uh, for his senior season. Uh, Traquan actually worked out. Kite did not. Kite's going to come back in a couple weeks and work out for the tie. Uh, but these are two guys that they really like a lot. This is also a really interesting defensive back group because 
There's several other defensive backs that Alabama is in great shape with, I believe. Guys like Denver Harris, five-star out of uh, Houston area. Uh, Terrence Brooks, who's going to be coming in for an official later on this month, also out of Texas. Uh, You have Earl Little Jr., who's going to be making a uh, trip to Tuscaloosa uh, next week. So you have some big names that are very high on Alabama. So you got to really try to make a decision. Which in-state target are you really going to push for? Are you going to push for both these guys? Or are you going to just push for one? I think Alabama is certainly get, probably going to get one of these guys in its recruiting class. But I heard Traquan Fagans had a great showing at camp. They were really impressed. Certainly a guy that Nick Saban has uh, uh, been very intrigued with over, over the course of the last few months. And uh, I think he has uh, really shot up Alabama's recruiting board. Antonio Kite, certainly somebody that they like. Um did not work out. I think he probably needed to work out, not necessarily to commit, but I think Alabama really is trying to figure out which position is he going to play. Is he going to play corner? Is he going to play safety? He's only played uh, high school football for one year, played high school football as a junior, and really blew up. I mean, we saw this a few years ago with uh, with, Hen- with Henry Ruggs, when he only played during his junior and senior year. So, and could Antonio Kite also, like Ruggs, outstanding basketball player so uh, this is a guy that they really like a lot and uh, he'll come back here in a few weeks uh, work out for the tide and I think you know they'll try to make a decision here are they going to take both of these guys or are they just going to take one uh, Curtis Perry uh, in-state defense lineman from Montgomery uh, attended Alabama's camp or he was in Tuscaloosa but did not participate in camp I know he um, you know certainly a guy that Alabama's interested in but as of right now he really needs to come back in camp he's going to come back uh, for the O-line, D-line camp here next week, the uh, 19th workout. I think Alabama will really decide after then, you know, are they going to press forward with Curtis Perry or are they going to, uh, you know, really look elsewhere? But let's talk about some of the other top 2022 guys who were in Tuscaloosa uh, over the course of the last week. And let's start with Ty Simpson. Now, this is an Alabama commitment through and through. He committed to the Crimson Tide back in late February, and uh, ever since then has been you know, extremely impressive. He's number 28 overall uh, in the Rivals 100. I consider him a five-star, and you know what? I'm going to call him a five-star, even though it just says four-star on his, uh, on his profile page. Let's call Ty Simpson what he is, and that's a five-star recruit. Um, got invited to the Elite 11, which he's going to be attending uh, later on this month. Worked out for, uh, for Coach Saban and uh, Coach Bill O'Brien a week ago. Came into town with his dad and uh, you know really enjoyed it a lot had a great in-depth interview uh, with Ty on BamaInsider.com so be sure to check that out uh, but he was in town just for uh, two days I think he was in town on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week so uh, hung out on campus spent a little time at the facility hanging out with coaching staff you got to remember even though a lot of these guys are committed they didn't have a chance to really meet these coaches. They talked to him on Zoom. They talked to him uh, through phone calls and text messages. This was the first time that he had a chance to sit down and actually talk in person to Bill O'Brien, the new offensive coordinator. So, you know, that was a great experience for him. Then he threw a little bit uh, on Wednesday, ended up coming back this past Tuesday with his mom, uh, get a tour of the campus, let his mom see everything for the first time. And Alabama fans, be sure to read our feature with Ty Simpson's parents on Bama Insider on Saturday. We've got a great in-depth interview with both of his parents about the week in Tuscaloosa last week, so be sure to check it out. Another big Alabama commitment that was in town last week was Jaheim Otis. Some people saw his his uh, his video from when he worked out at the Mississippi State camp. Also, you know, also went over to Starkville last week. This is a big, big boy, uh, six foot six. Uh, you know, we've seen some uh, some weight discrepancies on, uh, on some of the different sites. Some have them as 285 pounds. Some have them as 300, uh, a little bit north of 300 pounds. I think he's a little bit north of 350 pounds right now. So probably needs to, you know, at least, you know, lose a little bit of weight, get in a little bit better shape. But uh, from what I was told, Alabama was really impressed with what they saw. You know, this is a unique guy for his size to be able to move like he is, to, to be able to uh, to run, to have stamina. You know, I think it certainly uh, you know speaks volumes about you know the potential for Jaheim Otis. He just moved up into the Rivals 100, uh, so this is certainly a guy that we're going to be watching uh, for a long time. Uh, committed to Alabama back in the spring, and um, you know certainly somebody that I think could be a you know, a big space eater uh, here in the future at Alabama. We saw some other you know really interesting. 
out-of-state players that were in Tuscaloosa last week. Oscar Delp, uh, the number one tight end in the country, uh, out of Georgia. You know, I talked to Delp back at the Rivals camp uh, back in April, and it seemed like Alabama was really on the outside looking in for him. Uh, but after he made a trip to Tuscaloosa last week, you know, Alabama really shot up his list. I think they're really in the in, in the mix there with Georgia. Uh, even though I still think Georgia's probably in the driver's seat, uh, he took his first official visit to Athens this past weekend. Uh, you know, going to visit some other schools like South Carolina and Michigan, uh, but he's going to get to Alabama. Uh, back to Alabama for an official visit. We'll see how that trip goes, but I think Alabama has continued to uh, to make ways for him. So we'll continue to uh, to see what uh, goes on with his recruitment. And one of his close friends, Kojo Antwi, four star wide receiver, uh, also from Georgia, uh, made a trip over to Alabama last week. He was originally supposed to visit this week, but but came in last week instead. Um, you know. Worked out for the co- coaching staff and now says that he's going to try to take an official visit to Alabama a little bit later on. So uh, so we'll continue to watch his recruitment and see how things go. Two other defensive backs that we had a chance to speak with that visited Alabama uh, were Brian Allen Jr., who just recently picked up an offer from Alabama. Uh, same high school as Jason McClellan, JoJo Earl, Alito High School out in Texas, and also Devin Moore uh, out of Naples, Florida. I think it, the interest is probably a little bit higher and more. And you know, this is a big kid, six foot three, 195 pounds. You know, told me that if he could come up to Alabama every single weekend, he would certainly be there. He loved it. Coaching staff showed a lot of interest in him and definitely somebody that uh, that I would watch very closely moving forward. Um, there was one other defensive back that was in town last week uh, that Alabama had previously offered, and that was Kendrick Law out of Louisiana. I hadn't had a chance to speak to the Law just yet. Hopefully we'll have an interview with him on Bama Insider here in the future, but you know, certainly a guy that uh, has a lot of interest in Alabama, and Alabama has a lot of interest in him. You know, even though – Take a little bit of a pause there, Kyle. All right. So these camps give Alabama, like I said earlier, an opportunity to evaluate players, uh, you know, size them up, see how they do. And we, we saw a lot of guys that were in Tuscaloosa this past week who earned offers from Alabama. And a lot of those guys were underclassmen, but there were some 2022 guys who uh, received offers from Alabama during their camp performance. Uh, a couple in particular that were out of Louisiana, Quincy Wiggins, uh, defensive end, and Austin Osbury, uh, cornerback, you know, cornerback safety, He's measured in about six foot one, 100, 197 pounds. But these are two guys that uh, has really have really shot up the recruiting board, especially Wiggins. I think Wiggins has a chance to potentially you know, be one of these guys who goes from uh, you know outside the rivals two fifty to potentially a five star. We saw that we've seen that a few times with some of these Alabama targets over the course of the last few years, whether that was uh, William Anderson. Uh, a couple of years ago, or Dallas Turner last year. You know, Quincy Wiggins, I think, has that ability and certainly somebody that Alabama likes a lot. Now, LSU may be tough to beat for Quincy Wiggins, but Alabama certainly, uh, you know, made an impression, and um, I think he's going to come back for an official visit. Um, Hero Canoe, uh, Can- Canoe, Hero Canoe, <laughs> I, I'm probably butchering his name. But uh, but uh, defensive lineman uh, out of uh, out of California ended up uh, attending Alabama's camp uh, last week. Uh, he had a previous offer from Alabama, but it was one of these offers that you have an offer, but you still need to come to camp and show us what you got. And he came to camp, showed Alabama what he had, and really impressed. And now he has that green light to commit. He's taking a lot of visits this summer. Uh, attending a lot of camps i think a lot of you know a lot of different schools just want to see him and he's done re- really well at all these camps that he's attended and uh, now has that committable uh, offer for the crimson tide another big defensive lineman that visited this past uh, week was chris mcclellan out of oklahoma uh, this is also a kid who received an offer about a week ago from the crimson tide and he ends up making a trip to alabama and there was some confusion that when he got that offer a couple weeks ago that he was on campus. He actually wasn't on campus when that offer happened. Uh, so he, you know, came in the following week, worked out, and now, uh, you know, now certainly on Alabama's recruiting radar. All right, let's go on to our next talking point, and that's talking about top 
underclassmen who visited Alabama over the course of the last week. There were so many guys in town, guys that are elite players, guys that Alabama is going to heavily recruit. And I just want to talk about 2023 guys, guys who are going to be juniors in high school this upcoming fall who are big-time targets for Alabama. Uh, so let's talk about some defensive linemen. There was a lot of really elite defensive linemen uh, who were in Tuscaloosa. Some didn't work out. Some just visited and hung out with the coaching staff a little bit. You know, they've been seen by Alabama before, so they didn't necessarily have to work out or really do anything. And that was LT Overton, uh, number one player in the country out of Georgia. Also, Peter Woods, number five overall player in the country out of Thompson High School. Both of these guys, uh, you know, really blown away by their trip uh, to Alabama LTs. Father uh, was a previous associate athletic director at Alabama between 2009 and 2015. So he knows a lot about the Alabama program, knows Nick Saban well, uh, and you know knows the program uh, inside and out. So this was a big, big visit for him to get back on campus and just see everything, uh, get acquainted with coaching staff again, and uh, you know just being uh, being around the uh, the different players on the team and other recruits. Um, Peter Woods, in-state defensive lineman, number one player in the state of Alabama uh, in his recruiting class in 2023. I think he's probably going to commit to Alabama, I would say, before next spring. I, I'm sure Peter probably doesn't want me saying that uh, in terms of predicting that because uh, you know he wants to enjoy the recruiting process. He, you know, he, he's being recruited by all the top programs throughout the country. He's going to take a lot of visits. But you know, this is a kid who grew up an Alabama fan. Um, diehard Alabama fan, you know, certainly wants to, uh, in, in my opinion, I think he wants to play for the Crimson Tide, really loved uh, everything that he saw down in Tuscaloosa from the strength and conditioning program through uh, sitting down with Coach Saban as soon as he arrived on campus. He's going to enjoy the rest of the summer visits, and uh, and I think he's probably going to make a decision after his junior season. So we'll see what happens uh, with Peter Woods, but I really like Alabama's chances of getting him uh, on board here in the future. Got another in-state player that I was really impressed with uh, during the spring, A.J. Harris out of uh, out of Glenwood School uh, in Phoenix City, Alabama. Now, this is a kid who has really blown up over the course of the last several months. And, and we had a great interview with A.J. I think he's going to be one of Alabama's top defensive back targets. He really likes Alabama, likes Georgia, likes Clemson. Um, you know, not really tied down to uh, you know any certain school. Didn't really grow up necessarily a big fan of any particular program. He's a military son. Uh, you know, he's got a chance uh, to, uh, you know, really blow up as one of the premier uh, defensive backs in the country. Um, three other defensive linemen that I wanted to mention, David Hicks out of Allen High School in Texas, Kelby Collins, an in-state defensive lineman from Gardendale High School, and Jaden Wayne, big six foot six, 245-pound defensive lineman from, uh, from the Seattle area. All these guys were in Tuscaloosa over the course of the last week. We had interviews with all of these guys on BamaInsider.com. They had great trips to Tuscaloosa. I'm really impressed with this uh, Jaden Wayne kid. And I think he's, get, he's got a chance to really be something special. Uh, currently is the number 13 overall player in the, uh, in the 2023 class. I think he's got a chance to definitely be a five-star. I think he'll move into the top 10 uh, before too long. Caleb Presley, defensive back, also out of the Washington area, made a trip to Tuscaloosa uh, with Jaden Wayne, along with several other players from the area. Uh, he earned an offer from the Tide during his visit. Uh, so I, I think that uh, Alabama could potentially start building that pipeline to the Seattle area. You know, I think that Alabama has done such a great job throughout the last several years recruiting top players from every part of the country. For some reason or another, there's two areas that they haven't been able to, uh, uh, to really tap into yet, and that's Vegas and that's uh, the Pacific Northwest. So uh, we're going to keep an eye on, see if Alabama could potentially land a commitment later on this summer from Jake Taylor out of Vegas. Can they potentially get uh, JTT, who we'll talk about in a minute, uh, you know, Jaden Wayne, Caleb Presley, and next year's recruiting classes. These are certainly some guys uh, that they're heavily involved in and uh, will continue to, uh, to monitor their recruitment. Um, a couple other guys that were in town in that uh, 2023 recruiting class that, uh, really high on Alabama after their weekend or their week at Alabama, uh, Najee Harris, not spelled the same, 
uh, as Najee, but uh, pronounced the same. Offensive lineman out of IMG Academy. We know how well Alabama has done recruiting IMG uh, over the last several years, especially the offensive line position. Uh, you know, whether that was uh, Evan Neal or uh, or J.C. Latham in last year's recruiting class. Uh, Mateo uh, Ungalele, uh, defensive lineman, tight end out of California, St. John Bosco High School. Uh, his older brother, DJ, as many of you know, uh, quarterback at Clemson, was one of the top high school quarterbacks in the country, five-star quarterback. You know, we, there were so much comparisons between uh, DJ and Bryce Young coming out of high school. Yeah, I don't think I've – you know, it really remembered such a comparison between two guys since the um, you know since Julio Jones and AJ Green back in 2008. Everyone wanted to compare those two guys uh, as the best receivers in the country, you know, whether that was high school, college, NFL, uh, for such a long time. And now everybody wants to compare. You know, Bryce and DJ came from the same area. Now they're playing at two high, you know, elite college football programs. Both are going to be starters for their high for, I keep saying high school, for their college football programs this year. So it's going to, you know, it's really exciting, uh, you know, to see what these guys are going to be able to do over the course, you know, not only in college, but in the NFL uh, as well. But Mateo, even though many people probably assume he's a Clemson lean, uh, you know, we saw his tweet, uh, tweet from his father, uh, Big Dave, the other day, and, it's, and we have an interview on BamaInsider.com that Tony Sicalis was able to uh, get together with his father about the trip to Alabama. I think Alabama is going to have a great chance to land Mateo in this 2023 class. A couple other names I'll hit on real quick. Uh, Devin Hyatt, four-star wide receiver out of uh, South Carolina, earned an offer from Alabama. He really impressed. Reuben Owens uh, out of Texas, running back, is committed to Texas, uh, attended camps at Alabama, LSU, and also, you know, still committed to Texas right now, but, you know, I could see him potentially reopening uh, his recruitment. And then another big prospect that was in town this past week is Luke Haas, four-star Rivals 100 tight end out of Oklahoma. So I know that was a lot to go over. Uh, you, some of you will probably have to go back and, you know, listen to what all I had to say, but obviously a lot of big names that were in town, and we're going to see many more big names over the course of the next few weeks uh, leading into July. But let's talk real quick about 2024, 2025 recruits, and obviously still a long way away uh, in their recruitments. Um, you know, many people saw uh, the video, the viral video that went out. Uh, Sandra Afua, I'm sure I butchered that name. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, hopefully I'll get it right here in the future. But big 14 year old who received an offer from Alabama, also out of that, you know, was part of that Seattle uh, area group who made the trip to Tuscaloosa last week. Uh, picked up that offer from Alabama. Big six foot four, 350 pound uh, offensive lineman that looks well put together. Uh, you know, for being only 14 years old. Um, one in-state kid that you know really caught my attention, and I know caught Alabama's attention, uh, is Ronnie Royal. Worked out at running back, worked out at defensive back. You know, I heard really good things about how he did in the defensive backfield. Didn't pick up an offer last week, but I think you know he's certainly a guy that's probably going to be one of these top five in-state players uh, in the course of the next couple of years, and certainly somebody that I think Alabama is probably going to extend an offer to. Um, Played at Alexandria High School in Northeast Alabama. And now he's transferred down to Gulf Shores High School. So he's going to get a lot of attention down there. Uh, he's going to be playing at a, a uh, you know, little bit of a uh, you know, bigger level. And I think he's got a chance to really be uh, something special. Uh, David Washington out of Las Vegas. Another Vegas kid. How about that? Uh, wide receiver. Uh, had a really good showing in camp. Didn't receive an offer, but certainly somebody that uh, Alabama is going to be watching uh, moving forward. No relation, Robbie Washington out of uh, out of Georgia also attended camp last week. Picked up an offer. Uh, you know, Alabama was really impressed with him, and um, I think he's certainly somebody that they're going to continue to watch moving forward. Peyton Woodard. This is a kid that Alabama fans are going to have to know about, and he's going to be a national recruit. He's going to be one of the top overall players in the country in the 2024 recruiting class. And guess what, Alabama fans? He also grew up a Tide fan. He lives in California, 10 St. John Bosco Prep, uh, excuse me, high school, and but grew up an Alabama fan. His dad's from Mobile. Uh, his parents, both Alabama fans. His family has a lot of family that still lives in Alabama. Some that lives in Georgia too. But you know, he told me. I asked him the other day. You know, did you grow up an Alabama fan? And he said, you know. 
it's a you know being an Alabama fan is a thing in the Woodyard family. So this is something to watch moving forward. Even though he lives out in California, he is very high on the Crimson Tide, and he had a great showing at camp. Earned an offer from Nick Saban. You know, if anyone saw my story, this was the one that uh, he said his mom was in tears when uh, he told her about the offer. So we're going to be watching Peyton for a long time. I think there's a good chance that we could see him in Alabama's recruiting class here in a couple years. One other prospect I wanted to mention, uh, Davey Belfort, 2025 quarterback. Only going to be a freshman in high school uh, this fall at Cardinal Newman High School in West Palm Beach. Uh, his father, uh, Vidor uh, Belfort, is a MMA legend. Uh, many people who follow uh, mixed martial arts, UFC, you guys know about him. Uh, he received an offer from Alabama, had a you know pretty impressive showing for only being in the uh, 2025 recruiting class. But um, you know, I think when you see an offer get extended, whether it's 2023, 2024. 2025. A lot of these guys you still have to develop over the course of the next couple of years. It doesn't mean you can jump on board right now. You're going to be watched. You're going to be evaluated. Uh, you have to live up to a lot of expectations. So if you live up to those expectations and continue to develop and, and uh, you know, Alabama doesn't find somebody that potentially a little bit better over the course of the next few years, you're going to have that spot to commit. So when we see these offers get extended, don't immediately think, well, they can commit right now. Not necessarily. Some might, but not all. So you got to develop. You got to. Uh, you got to continue to work. You got to continue to improve. And um, you know, I think that uh, you know, a lot of these guys understand that, and they know that um, you know they're going to have they're going to have a lot of eyes on them now. You know, when Alabama extends you an offer, you probably start getting offers from other programs that you didn't necessarily think you were going to get offers from, but. There's also going to be a lot more scrutiny on you. You know, why is this kid better than me? What can I do to you know make sure that I'm better than him? So uh, you got a lot of people that are going to be coming after you and trying to be better than you. You got to make sure that you're always better than them and always working hard to uh, to to improve your game. So that's kind of a look at everything that's been going on over the course of the last week, at least in Tuscaloosa. Official visitors, top 2022 guys, new offers. Top underclassmen, whether it was 2022 or 2023, 2024, 2025, a lot of big names that were on campus over the course of the last week. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest news that I saw outside of Tuscaloosa was the uh, fact that we saw some big news on five star defensive linemen. You know, Walter Nolan, you know, came out after his official visit to Florida last weekend, said that, uh, that his recruitment was shut down, that he was ready to make a decision. But a few days later, father comes out and says, well, pump the brakes there. Still going to take some visits. Still going to enjoy this recruiting process a little bit more before we make a decision. So maybe Florida is in the lead right now. Maybe somebody else. But I think, it, you know, probably a good sign for the Gators. But he's still going to take some visits. He was at Georgia uh, earlier this week. Going to visit. I think he's back in Gainesville this weekend, uh, attending the Future 50 camp over at IMG. Uh, so he made a stop in at Gainesville. Uh, supposed to visit Alabama in late June. We'll see if that visit still happens, but still a long way to go in his recruitment. I don't think we're going to see anything uh, really major happen anytime soon. Bear Alexander, the five star defense tackle from Texas. Committed to Georgia back in the spring. I think he actually committed around signing day, if it wasn't on signing day. Uh, decommitted from the Bulldogs um, after he took a visit over to Texas A&M, which you know, there was a lot of people that assumed when he committed to Georgia, uh, you know, it probably wasn't a good sign for Georgia because he didn't want to be the first one to, uh, to get a commitment just because everybody thought his recruitment was going to go all the way until signing day. Sure, George is still very much in the mix there, but uh, visited Texas A&M, has uh, visited Texas in the last week, also has a visit planned for Alabama on June the 25th. So Barry Alexander is going to be making a trip to Tuscaloosa. Uh, not ready to say that Alabama is strongly in the mix there, but obviously they're in the mix and they're going to get a, vis a an official visit from him. We'll kind of see where things go after that official. Now, I know what Alabama fans want. You want to know about JTT. JT Tullamola, what's going on in his recruitment? Uh, when's he going to make that decision? That decision is going to happen at the end of June or you know first of July. Then he's going to enroll into campus, taking those official visits. Going to you know visit Alabama, going to visit Oregon, going to visit uh, Ohio State, Washington, USC. He has that official visit locked in for Alabama on June the twenty fifth. 
Going to be a big weekend in Tuscaloosa. A lot of official visitors on campus that weekend, uh, including Alabama quarterback commitment Ty Simpson, who says he's coming into town that weekend just to help recruit. So uh, this is a big weekend uh, for Alabama on uh, June the 25th. So we'll be circling that weekend and uh, and see kind of what's uh, going to happen with a lot of these guys that are coming in town. But what to expect moving forward? A lot of news still to come. I mean, this was just the first week, guys. Uh, you know, there was so much information. We have so many interviews, so much content on BamaInsider.com. I certainly encourage you all to go back to Bama Insider. Check it all out. So many great interviews um, with all of these guys. Uh, I say all, the majority of them. I mean, there's just so much content uh, that we've been able to produce on Bama Insider over the course of the last week, uh, you know, we've been very fortunate uh, to get a lot of interviews and great content, and it's just going to get uh, even better moving forward. So there's still a lot of coverage to come. Uh, kind of a slower weekend in Tuscaloosa this week. Only a few visitors on campus. Um, no Derek LeBlanc, a big defensive lineman uh, from Florida in the 2023 class. Peyton Kirkland, an offensive lineman from Florida, also in that 2023 class, going to be on campus on Saturday. Uh, Special teams camp at Alabama. Will Alabama potentially extend an offer to a punter, a new kicker? We're going to be paying really close attention to that this weekend, see what happens. But uh, next week, big, big week in Tuscaloosa. And I'm not going to go through all the big names because there's a lot of getting, a lot of names. We have all the summer visits locked in on BamaInsider.com, so I encourage you to go check that out. Uh, but some of the top names who are going to be in town next week for official visits – uh, include five-star offensive lineman Julian Armella from Florida, Zach Rice, five-star uh, offensive uh, tackle from Virginia. You also have Damani Jackson, five-star defensive back uh, from the state of California, currently committed to USC. Uh, you have Luther Burden, who's the number one wide receiver in the country, uh, visiting next weekend. Uh, Earl Little Jr. is going to visit, uh, you know, big-time defensive back target. Uh, Inay White, a linebacker uh, out of Pennsylvania. That, uh, Danny Dennis Sutton, five-star defensive lineman uh, out, of, uh, out of Maryland, also a big visitor for the Crimson Tide. Uh, next weekend. So big week, Arch Manning, uh, you know, he's another big name that's uh, scheduled to visit Tuscaloosa. So it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of great content still to come on BamaInsider.com. So be sure to go to Bama Insider, subscribe, check it all out. I think you'll really enjoy it. And uh, we'll have much more content still to come uh, throughout the next couple weeks uh, on Bama Insider, on our Bama Insider YouTube channel. If you like this video, please be sure to give me that thumbs up. That really helps out our channel a lot. And I hope you share this video with a ton of Alabama fans. And I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time.